This is my first personal computer, an MSI PCS 80-30. I bought it at the Computerland Franchise Store on Colorado Boulevard here in Denver in the fall of 1977. My system came with a North Star 5.25 inch single density floppy disk drive. These cost around $500 in the late 70s. Eventually I added a second floppy and later swapped out the North Star controller card for a micro complex double density controller. There was an integral 5 inch CRT monitor built into the front of the cabinet. This was far too small to be used for any length of time, especially in 80 column mode. So I added an external 9 inch Sanyo video monitor which displays the same output as the 5 inch monitor. The keyboard is an MSI IKB-1 programmable device which employs an 8048 control processor and communicates with the system using a parallel port. In addition to the usual shift and control keys there is a flag key which allows the high order bit of an ASCII character to be set. I use this feature to generate function key characters. The keyboard was fully debounced and featured N key rollover and auto repeat when a key was held down. There is also a small speaker to provide audible beeps and a three LED indicator panel. With the cover removed, we can see the 28 amp power supply on the right side of the cabinet and the 10 slot S100 bus behind the integral monitor on the left. I currently have seven cards in my system. In the front is the video interface board, an MSI VIO-C. It provides the logic and firmware to control the CRT devices. Immediately behind the video board is the processor board, an MSI MPU-B. It contains a 3 MHz 8085 CPU, the system ROM which gains control on power-up, one serial and one parallel port, and three programmable timers. Behind the CPU board are four 16K static memory boards. Memory was expensive in the late 70s, and these boards cost around $400 each. And in the rear slot is the Micro Complex Double Density Controller Card, which is North Star compatible. I have all the original documentation which came with my system. This includes a lot of diagrams and schematics. I have also generated quite a bit of documentation which describes software which I have written. In the past couple of years I have accumulated several PDF files which contain documentation on CPM based compilers and applications that I have found on the internet and installed on my system. This box contains around 250 5 and a quarter inch floppy diskettes which I use with my system. A few are original software distribution diskettes. Some are user group distribution disks from the North Star Software Exchange and CPM user groups. But most are disks which I purchased during the five year period that my system was used frequently. These diskettes are 10 sector per track and hard sectored. This means that there is an index hole preceding each sector on the disk. Hard sector diskettes are difficult to locate today. I recently purchased a jig, which is the white uh, round device you see in front of the box. This allows me to convert an IBM compatible 360 kilobyte diskette to hard sectored format by punching 10 additional index holes. When power is turned on, the system begins execution of the ROM resident PCS80-30 system monitor and prompts for commands to be entered from the keyboard. 
The most frequently used command is to jump to and begin execution of the bootstrap loader which resides in ROM on the floppy disk controller. I use a variant of the jump command which removes the system monitor from address space before jumping to location E800. This is the K command followed by an address which I will enter now. As you can see, we have just booted a disk containing DOS. This is a customized version of MicroComplex DOS, which as my banner proclaims, is compatible with Northstar DOS 5.1. The automatic directory display results from having preloaded a program name in the command buffer. In this case, a program which I wrote to display directory information. This disk contains several programs used for software development. I'll load the macro assembler and specify the name of the source file. The output file is for the relocatable. And I'll specify option 7 which uh, will produce a formatted program listing. I used Alan Ashley's program development system, PDS. It included a unified assembler and editor, a macro assembler, a simple loader and a relocating and linking loader, a string oriented text editor, and a trace debug utility. I wrote my own full screen editor and a dynamic debug program. Both took advantage of the memory mapped video display for speed and usability features. I'll show you those in another video. My customized BIOS included I.O. redirection. Input could come from the keyboard or from a disk file. Output could go to the screen, to a printer, to a disk file, or any combination of the three. I'll use the relocatable loader to load the object file to a free memory location immediately following DOS. We'll test this by jumping to that location. And as you can see, we now have a directory listing. I can save the memory contents to a disk file if I like and make that an executable file. Although most of my software development activity was done under DOS, I also used the CPM operating system. I started with release 1.4 and later installed 2.2 and both were Lifeboat Associate releases for Northstar Discs. There is a lot of vintage software available under CPM 2.2. You can find disk image files on Dave Dunfield's excellent website and also on bitsavers.org. It's kind of fun to experiment with software that I could not afford back in the day, including a lot of compilers and applications which are currently unsupported or placed in the public domain. I have found disk images containing various macro assemblers and a lot of compilers including BASIC, COBOL, ALGOL, ADA, Turbo Pascal, C, and my favorite, Fortran 80, which has just computed values for Pi. I didn't use WordStar back in the late 70s, but I recently installed it on my MSI. WordStar was developed by Rob Barnaby on a PCS 80-30 much like mine, so I was not surprised to find that the VIO-C video card was a supported device. It was fairly easy to get WordStar and SpellStar up and running and I have been able to experience what many feel was a classic computer application. Another application that I like a lot is CompuView Products Vedit or Vedit Full Screen Editor. I've used it a lot under MS-DOS on IBM PCs 
but did not use it under CPM on my MSI. The customization was more difficult than WordStar. I had to set up a user-defined terminal device and provide the character sequences for cursor addressing, insert and delete functions, and some other video controls. It is my editor of choice on CPM. Another operating system that I used was the UCSD P-Code system. A P-Code system is designed to be highly portable and so far as possible machine independent. This system was developed at the University of California, San Diego and included an assembler and the UCSD Pascal compiler. My disks were distributed by Northstar computers. The system is menu driven and at each level there is a menu on the top line of the screen. You select a menu item such as the file handler by pressing a single key, an F in this case. The screen is cleared and a new sub menu placed on the top line of the screen. To display the files found on a disk, which were called volumes, you would press L and provide the volume name or unit number. I'll enter unit number 5 for floppy drive 2. Files were time stamped and the system kept date information in the file directory. The UCSD system had a lot of interesting features, but there was very little commercial software developed for it. My original printer was an Integral Data Systems IP225 impact printer. It communicates with the system using a serial port at 1200 baud. Although it prints both upper and lower case, the lower case characters do not have descenders because the print head has only seven solenoids and print wires. The print mechanism uses a common typewriter ribbon. Since my three operating systems each communicate with the printer using a serial port, it's a simple matter to connect the serial port to a modern laptop running hyperterminal. This allows me to capture printer output or any ASCII data sent over the serial port at 9600 baud. The laptop is connected to a wireless network, so I can print listings from my MSI on a network laser printer. Wish I could have done that 34 years ago. With a modified BIOS, I can use the laptop to replace the MSI keyboard and video display but because I use so many memory map to video applications this is not terribly useful. But what I do find very useful is to use the laptop and serial port to upload Northstar disk image files which I have downloaded from the internet. I use Dave Dunfield's Northstar transfer software NST this requires a small disk I.O. stub running on the MSI. This program receives and checksums binary data sent over the serial port and creates physical diskettes on the Northstar drives attached to my MSI. NST also works in the opposite direction by reading a diskette on the MSI and creating a disk image file on the laptop.